Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Welcome back. Today we are talking about shakers, or more specifically, shaker elements, shaker mixes. How can you make beautiful, interesting shaker mixes on your own without having to buy them pre-mixed from another company? So keep an eye out for all of the sequins and elements that you see that you can put into shaker mixes. And I think we're going to have a blast with this. So let's get started. Let's take a look at some shakers here and discuss some ways to really create interest. Now I'm going to zoom in so that you can really see what's going on here. And the first thing I want to talk about is variety in your shaker elements. When I say shaker elements, I mean the items that you are adding in the shaker. So it isn't always sequins, and that's something to consider. I mean, when we start off, it's like, oh, let's grab some sequins and toss them in there. Now you can see I have some hexagonal pieces here. They're flat, they're holographic. I have some sequins right here. I have, uh, they're like a hot pink. And then these big hearts here are actually shrink plastic. I did a video showing how you can make shaker bits out of shrink plastic. And then I have these little tiny clear diamond pieces. So in doing this, in creating variety, I've done several things. I've used different shapes. So we have hearts, circles, and we have hexagons. I use different size elements. So you can see the size of the heart, the size of the diamond, the size of the sequins. So that adds a lot of interest to have different sizes. So if you're going to use all one color scheme, for instance, you want to use different sizes in here in different shapes. Rounds, yeah, hexagon, hearts, and then material. So you can use clay pieces, foam, glitter, glass, plastic. That adds texture to it. Now the diamonds really improve the texture uh, of what's going on here, but also the hearts and the fact that they're flat. And then opacity. So how translucent or solid is your item? These hot pink sequins are very opaque. These holographic flat pieces are a little translucent. And another thing is weight. You want to add something that has weight to it because that improves the shakeability, as I call it. So these little diamonds and these shrink plastic pieces help this to shake well, whereas if it were just the sequins and the flat uh, table scatter ones, it wouldn't shake well because they're very lightweight. So let's look at some other projects and then we will come back and we will actually create some mixes. So here's one right here from last year's December Daily. I have clay pieces. So let's first look at color. Um, I have basically two colors. It's like red or three, red, white, and silver. And so we have that it improves the uh, quality or the interest. Size, we have this size and we have the smaller. Shape, we have circles and we have snowflakes in here. There are some translucent snowflakes. I don't know if you can see them. They're kind of piled up down at the bottom here. Material, these are clay and these are metal, right? These are the plastic. Well, these are actually plastic. They look like metal. Opacity, the fact that we have the translucent snowflakes down here really adds to it. And also the shimmer. I want to add shimmer to my list of varieties because we've got some shimmery metallic pieces, the holographic, but then we have these solid ones right here. And weight, something to help it shake, and that is these little candy pieces. So these are in my shop, the little candy pieces. Now here is a really old one made a long time ago. I don't know if we can really see in here really well because when it's this thick, the thing is these pieces tend to overlap one another and it's very hard to see inside what's going on. But I see a clay piece right here and it's a little white. It looks like, um, looks like a face almost right there. You can see it. I have uh, star shapes. I have some circles, but they're instead of being the typical round cupped sequin, they are swirled. I also see that I have some beads in here and those help the shakeability. Okay, and now this one. Let's put this over here as well. 
So this is a coin capsule, and so is this. I have done many things with coin capsules. Let's see if I can do this so you're not getting the glare. I'm using this as the base to the flower or the center of the flower, and because of that, I wanted to go with all the colors that would make up the center of a sunflower. So they all have this rich brown look to them. And so as far as color, it's this is a monochromatic scheme. To compensate for that, I have changed sizes up and I have different sized items in here. I have changed up the shape. I have tiny little stars in here. And I the material, uh, it's pretty much, there are some seed beads, so that does help break it up, but it also adds to the weight. Uh, of it and opacity. I do have some trans, the stars are translucent, but again, that really gives it a nice, a nice variety. This one is from a friend. So what she did, she looked at her project, and this is one of the things I look at as well. I look at my project, what colors are going on in here. You've got the rich oranges, the, the gold yellow, and some even lighter colors of yellow as well. You could pull a little bit of green in. She chose not to, but she she just nailed it. She's got all the different of colors, shapes, textures, and sizes, and she's got little seed beads in there to add weight. Another one from the same friend. Uh, it's not quite monochromatic in that it's silver and black, but it's close. It's just two colors. Sometimes if you add too many colors to your shaker, it really gets confusing. But shapes, she's got stars. She's got the long beads. She's got the tiny round seed beads. She's got squares, the cup sequin. She has two different sizes of sequins, too. The silver ones are larger than the black. She's got Actually, she's got black seed beads and clear seed beads, and it's just amazing. And there's also some holographic sequins in here as well. Here's another example of basically a two-color theme. Um, so she went with the hot pink and the black. And sometimes when you have something this thick, either thick or something very, a large shaker such as a full-page shaker, you want to add some really large elements for interest. She has some really large clear uh, flowers in here, and she has one glass uh, cabochon in here as well, and a, a solid pink flat back flower. And I don't know if I can, there we go. It's underneath right here, there, right there is the flower. Beautiful. Another one from a friend. And you will see, again, how she matched the colors in here perfectly with the colors of this. And it only takes a hint of color. You don't have to do too much. I love that she used a, a colored background for the shaker. See, you get a totally different look than if you're using a solid background. And so she pulled in this color of blue. She pulled in, she even has some, looks like a hole punch from the same paper collection, which is a really great idea to do too, as long as you add some bits to shake that, that up. So she has the pinks and she has, she added silver as another base color, a lot of cream. She's got some glittery elements, some holographic stars, hearts, circles, you name it. Very well done. Now, Another thing to consider is it doesn't always have to shake a lot. Now this person used, she put a big shoe, a high heel shoe right in the middle here and then added just a few sprinkles of, of color in here. There are different sizes of sequins and she had, does have some seed beads to help move things around. But you can do just by adding color and size. Sometimes that's all you need. Uh, I do always try to include something for weight, though. And I also want to show you, this is from, it says Buttons and Galore, and they make these incredible mixes. So I'm just going to open this up and let you take a peek in here. So you can see all the goodies that they include in theirs. So they have cupped sequins of many sizes and design. This has got a pattern to it. This is translucent holographic. They add buttons. Look at these. 
they add different sizes of buttons. Now, you know if you're going to use buttons, you really have to have a deep shaker pocket to hold all that. It won't go in something really narrow. But there are little tiny seed beads, and it's just beautiful. And I'm seeing pink, blue, white, and that green is the basis of this one. Okay, now let's do some mixing. So I'm going to bring this out so that we can have little pots here. And the best way I know to do this is to look at my project and think about what colors I'm going with. So let's pick out some random cardstock. Let's go with this. It's very bold. And let's put that right on there so that we can see what we're working with. Obviously, the first color we see is the green, but it, and it's pretty obvious to go with green. But if we pick up the pink, the red, and the orange, and the white, and the little bit of blue, I think that would really give us more interest. Let's do a foundation of white. And so I'm just going to pull in some white sequins right here. And it doesn't take much. It depends on the, the, the surface area that you're filling in. Now, I like these. These are toppings. They're called Topping Pops from um, Queen & Company. They are extremely staticky, so there is something there to consider. We can put in a little bit of this pink here, and I think I like that it makes it look like the flower buds. And these are pink also, but they're swirly, flat sequins. Now, my, my two big go-to companies are Queen & Company and Cartwright. These are from Cartwright, and I think you will love their sequins. And I do not have any sort of affiliate relationship with either one. Okay, now we have round, round, and round. Everything is round, so maybe if we add our next color, we can use these little tiny flowers, and they are called Sunflower. Just a pinch, because I don't want that yellow to overpower my pink. Now, I would say if I'm going to go with another color, I would only use one more, like the blue or the green, but not both. That's very pretty. I'm kind of leaning toward blue, so I'm thinking of adding a couple of these, like that, and then something else blue, too. That could be our thing that we use to add the weight. And we're going to use these little diamonds from Queen & Company. And those are also blue. Perfect. And there we have it. We have this little shaker bit right here that will work with this particular paper. Okay, now let's choose a different paper. And I'm going to use something from Dress My Craft, and this is from their Pink Smoke Paper Collection. And let's go with this right here. Okay, let's fill in this one right here. These are very, very soft colors. I love them, so let's see what we can come up with. I think I want to go with these. These are Recollections Holographic. So we're starting right off with the translucence, but see it, it also, they're holographic, so they have a, they carry a lot of these pink and lavender colors in with them. For shaking, shakeability, I have these lavender beads. Now they are two different sizes and shapes. They are the long tubular ones and they are also the round ones. So let me see if I can get some of the, I want to get some of the long ones in here. There we go, because that would really improve the interest. They're all lavender, they're beautiful. I'm just gonna go with, let's do the monochromatic where we're sticking with the one color theme. Isn't that pretty? I think I'm going to add some more. These beads are a little on the thicker side, so again, I need to have a rather deep pocket. Now, these are also from Dress My Craft. They're called Shabby Chic. I want you to see that they already have quite a bit of mix in them, and you can actually incorporate a mix into your project. So this has, it's mostly holographic and ivory colors that I'm reaching for. I'm not reaching for the blue in here, but there is a tiny little blue button, very cute. I'm trying to go for a very pale looking shaker for this. So that's why I'm specifically reaching for the, um, the non-blue ones. And also to improve the shaking, I am adding some of these clear seed beads. Now, I have these stars, and these are in my shop as well. They're clay, 
but I, I could add a few here, but I really think that I don't want to go with that. I think that I'm looking for a style that is the translucent will fit perfectly. I just think that this is going to be really pretty. These are actually um, parts to making a bracelet, apparently, and I had picked these up thinking these they're rubber, and I think they're really fun. But I could add a couple of these white ones there. I think the pink ones are too, they're not the color of pink I want for this. They're not subtle enough, but I could add a couple of these white ones and they will just add some interest without being overpowering. And I'm just going to call that quits. I just think that that's going to be perfect for me. Okay, let's pick out another paper. One of my favorite things to do is to play with honey and bee themed papers. And this is actually part of the, it's called sunflowers. It's part of the sweet as honey paper collection, which is in my shop. So let's play with this. And I want to really play up the yellows in here. And so I have yellow. Many of these have been repackaged uh, from what they originally were in. When I find little tubular, um, I want a lot of yellow. <laughs> when I find tubes, I just keep them. And let's get some sunflower colors in here. These are actually tubes of seed beads that you can get from the craft stores. And these are translucent and they're small and they add weight. So right there, you could actually just do these two things and that would be fine. Another thing you could do is to use a little tiny paper cutouts for a bee or something similar. Now I'm thinking I want a little bit, a hint of darker color in here, but I also have these yellow buttons and I think these are probably from the dollar store and all I need is one really. Now these are some darker brown uh, seed beads and I actually think that that might be okay. They are, they're fine. And I want to come back and revisit these these golden yellow flowers from Cartwright. I think those are going to be a perfect addition to this. Oh, they are. They're kind of a honey color, and that's what I love about them. And I think that is perfect. That one button really adds a, some an element of surprise and interest to this, and that's perfect. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, let's turn it over and do this one. What can we do with a black gingham? Anything. Because what we have to look at what our materials are that we're going to be adding to this project. Let's just uh, say that we're going to add a pop of red to this. Let's use these. These are penguins. So that will be a clay element. It's nice and black and white. And then we have the white also flowers. These are also, they're opaque, petite flowers. I use the petite flowers a lot from Cartwright. Now, if this were going to be Christmas, I do have these white angels. They're also flat table scatter. Those would be really cute in here. I don't think they're going to work with my uh, penguins too well. I could add a little bit of star. They're big for sure. So I only want to add a tiny pop of color with these. Like not overpower it. I want my main colors to be the black and the white. The red is just there to get that pop of color. And I could also add the little candy swirls. Let's see, can we add a little bit of this? Not much, it's more of an orangey red. I have to be careful with that. Another thing that we can do is these. These are the Christmas cookie, cookie cutouts and these are really, really fun. And I used the gingerbread men recently in a video, but I have the stars as well. And since I have those red stars in there, I think a silver star would be the perfect accent for this. And I actually would call that quits right there. I think that is going to be perfect. Okay, how fun is that? Now I have these really fun llama papers I want to use. Right there's the llama. Now I'm going to give you, under this video, I'm going to give you a link, to, two links actually, to how I store my sequins and my shaker bits. Okay, we have some really fun colors in here. I think I want to pull in, let's see if I have anything that's kind of this golden color and also me the turquoise or the navy. One of the things that I do is I put the my sequins in these and that's one of the videos I'm going to give you. Ah, here we go. 
This is the darkest that I have, is this one right here. And then I have this lighter turquoise color. Um, these are the metallic shiny ones. If I go to some of these opaque ones, that would be really pretty too and would give us a, a good contrast between those two. I'm adding more of the lighter color. Now I could also pull in some of that red, but I think it might be a little bit too much. So I'm looking to see what I have that might be in that cream color look. And that would be this one right here. This is the color of the cacti. Now, so these ones are shiny metallic. The others are opaque. This is opaque. These are holographic. So we do have some interest and there's different sizes going on there. But I'm thinking one more thing might really pull that in. And I have these gold stars. It's just a little accent. You can add an accent color without it uh, detracting from the color scheme you have. So if you use gold, silver, or white, um, it will complement the set you have without being overpowering. I like that a lot. I would not add red to that one just because I think it's too would be too much right now. And I'm going to say let's use the same paper but do a different shaker mix. So let's look at the deep reds that I have like this one and more of this. This is one of my favorites and I use it so much. This is also really good for doing honey projects and bees. And these are, this is also good for honey projects. These are some kind of translucent golden colors. But you can see how this works with the paper, this works with the paper, but they are completely different. Just to add volume to it, I'm going to add another neutral. And I have these. They're a cream color. That is exactly what I needed. They are also from Cartwrights. And I don't have the colors. When I match these all up, I should have put in the colors in on my little tubs, and I didn't do it. Now let's stir that. You can see the red. Now, we have not put a variety of shapes, but we do have sizes. We have um, opacity and we have different colors. So that's enough. You don't have to have uh, your mix change up every one of the elements, you know, size, opacity, shape, etc. Okay, so let's look and see what else we have. Here's another llama paper. Let's do this one. And let's do something in the middle section right here. Okay, wouldn't you know, this is a beautiful sea color right there. It's gorgeous. So let's grab some of that. That is perfect for this. And I think this is actually black right there, or it may be navy. It's hard to tell. So let's add just an itty bit. Oops, that was not good. Look at this. It's falling everywhere. And it just contaminated some of my other ones. So I'm just going to pick that up with my fingers and bring that in there. And these are holographic. They're tiny and they also have um, a different shape. Okay, so when this happens, normally I'm not mixing um, one color and dragging it over another. I'm just working on that project. But because I'm making this palette here, that's why it got in here. Based on this particular one, I think that the black is okay to be in there. It's not going to cause me any grief. Otherwise, I would just use my little pokey tool and pull them all out of there one at a time. This is great, but I think it needs something light colored in there. And I have this, which I love as well. These are holographic. They're solid circles. They're like little discs. They're completely flat. And I think that helps to break that up, the harshness between the black and that C. And look how perfect is that. It works so well. The only thing I would say I need there is something for shakeability. I don't have anything heavy to help break that up. So let's do that. And I think really these, these are kind of a grayish silver gray. I think that would be just fine to add weight. And the color is so unobtrusive. And I think it reminds me of the lighter color of gray here in the llama. So that is that one. That is perfect. There we have our shaker mixes, and you can see how the little styrofoam balls really cling to everything. So you, you really need to use, if you're going to use those styrofoam balls, you make sure that you also use an uh, anti-static 
tool when you're putting your shaker together. One more tip for you, and that is if you are going to do a full page shaker such as this, make sure that there's some sort of interest going on behind. So you can see I have patterned paper and I selected to make sure the bee and the beehive were noticeable. The other thing you can do is add something very large in it, like I did this. I added this honeycomb paper inside the full page shaker. Let me zoom back out because we are looking at something very large. I'll also give you under this video, I will give you a link to this entire journal that I made with the bee theme. And I have this one here is also a full page shaker and it also has a different kind of honeycomb in there. So put something big in it or have some really interesting paper going on in the back. And you can see here, I want to point out, I have hearts, stars, flowers, plus all the circular shapes. So we have a lot going on there. So thank you for watching. I hope that inspired you to play around and get more confident in making your own shaker mixes.